Welcome to my new video series on coding with Flutter. In this series I'll show you how to create apps for iOS and Android with Flutter. In order to understand this material you should already be familiar with object-oriented programming. This is because Flutter apps are written in Dart which is an object-oriented language. So if you have any previous experience with languages such as Swift, Java, C Sharp or even JavaScript then you're good to go. In any case, don't worry, I will always explain things step by step. Feel free to ask me any questions and I'll make sure to help you. So let's get started. On this video I will show you how to build a mobile app with Flutter. Flutter is a mobile UI framework by Google to build uh, iOS and Android applications. For the remainder of this video I will assume that you already have the Flutter SDK installed over your system and if you don't have it installed, you can head to flutter.io on your browser and follow the instructions. I will be running this demo on macOS, but if your system is on Windows or Linux, you can use that also. Before we create a new project, I want to show you a preview of what we will be building. So here I have a screen with a login um, form which is composed by an email and the password that the user will be able to fill in and then by tapping on the login button it will be able to authenticate. I will show you how to handle authentication with Firebase and so part of this will be uh, hooking things up so that we have a project that can um, communicate with Firebase. In addition to the login form, uh, we will also build a registration form which is obviously useful the first time that the user uh, uses the app and he needs to create an account. So this is what we will create today and now we are ready to start a new project. So let's open a new terminal and let's create a new project. So we do that with the command flutter create, we'll give it an organization name and the name of our app. So in this case it would be login demo. Now once we do this it will create all the project files that we need to run the application and it will also it will run this command flutter packages get that is used to get all the dependencies that are needed within the project. So once this is done we are then ready to uh, open the app and for this example I will be using Visual Studio Code but if you have another IDE, such as IntelliJ IDEA, you can use that also. So now I'm heading over to Visual Studio Code and I can use it to open my new project. So it's going to be login demo. And let's see what it looks like. So on this pane on the left, we have a number of folders, which are the ones that are used um, as part of the Flutter project. And the main file that we'll be looking at initially is called main.dart and this is the file that contains uh, all the boilerplate code for a standard app built in Flutter. If you want this is the hello world that uh, comes bundled when you create a new project. So we're not really going to look much into this and in fact we're going to create our new app from scratch so we're going to delete all of this code and we're good to go. So we're going to import this file which includes all the things that we need to build our app and then we need to define a method called main which is the entry point of our application so don't forget to always use this and inside we're gonna call run app and we're gonna give it a new my app and this is what is going to define the application we're then going to create a class called my app which extends stateless widget. Now at this point I should clarify that in Flutter you can create two types of widgets. Widgets are the building blocks of all your applications so they play a central role in building apps with Flutter and there are widgets of two types stateless and stateful. I will tell you a bit more about the distinction between these two uh, in a bit. Uh, for now let's just carry on. So once we have this uh, app we want to be defining the widget hierarchy and this is done with a build method and we're going now to implement this method so the way we're going to do this is to return a new material up and inside here we can give it a title 
for example, Flutter login demo. We also possibly can define a theme. Uh, so, for example, this would be uh, a new theme data, and this is made of a, a primary swatch uh, defined as color blue for example so this really just defines some common theme for the entire application um, the most important thing in this uh, material app uh, method is that you would need to define a home and that's going to be our new login page so we haven't built the login page yet so uh, this code will not compile so what we're gonna do now is create it so we're going to this side of the project and we're going to create a new file called login page.dart so once again let's import our material package and let's define our login page as a stateless widget for now and like we did before we are going to define a uh, uh, build method and inside this uh, is going to be the code that we'll be using to uh, render our page so what we want in this case is just a simple header at the top and then some content uh, body uh, underneath so the way we build such a uh, uh, UI is by creating a new uh, widget called, called scaffold which is essentially made of an application bar uh, which we can define as new app bar and this takes a title uh, so for example uh, it could be a new text which says um, flutter login demo um, then after the app bar we also need to define a body so uh, the way we do this is by specifying a body and here we're just going for now to put a new container and I'll talk about containers in a second uh, for now I just want to get something going so this has a child and here we're just gonna put uh, a text quickly to, to get things going so it's going to be new text um, hello world okay so we should have everything that we need now to um, to run uh, our app. Oh, uh, just one more thing. We have created this login page here, but we also need to import it in our main file. Otherwise, it can't find it here. So we're going to do that quickly. And we're going to say uh, import login page of art. So now the app should just uh, compile correctly. Uh, we can now actually run it on our simulator and to do that uh, we're going to our terminal to run the app we're going to type in flutter run and we're gonna let it build the project and run it on the iOS simulator so while uh, this is building uh, let's recap and review what we've built so far so we started from scratch uh, by building a new application we call this my app which is of type stateless widget and uh, inside here we have defined a build method so because this is the root widget of the app we have defined a new material app which gives us access to a lot of uh, things to do with the theme of the app and customization we then created a home widget called login page which we define here and to keep things simple for now we just created created it as a stateless widget we also implemented the build method and inside we put a scaffold with an app bar and a body uh, with a container and a text inside so we should be able to now see this um, right in place so we now see the app bar which is this blue area at the top and we can also see the hello world text so I think we're good and we are ready to move on to the next stage so we are almost ready to build the layout for our login page but before we do that I promised that I would explain the difference between stateless and stateful widgets 
So let's do that quickly. A stateless widget is a widget that always renders in the same way. So you might be able to um, pass in some initial configuration when you create the widget, uh, such as uh, the title, uh, as we have done with the login page. But once this is set, uh, every time you call build on the widget, it's always going to render itself in the same way. A stateful widget is quite different. So what happens here is that, again, it will have an initial state and it will do an initial render pass. However, with a stateful widget, you might be able to define uh, certain events or triggers that you can use to modify the internal state. So in our case, we would be defining an email and a password field and perhaps a message for the user to uh, inform them whether the login has succeeded or failed. So once you modify the state, uh, you can then trigger a rebuild of the widget itself and the widget will then re-render itself based on the state information that we have updated. So we will see exactly how this is done in the login page and we are now ready to go back to our editor. We are now ready to convert our login page from a stateless widget to a stateful widget. So let's do that. So we're going to say that the login page uh, now extends stateful widget and we immediately notice that there's an error. And this is telling us that we need to implement a method called create state. So let's do that. So this is something that is always required when we make a widget stateful. And what we are going to do is to say that this method returns a new login page state and complete the implementation like this. We are going to then say that we create a class called login page state, which extends state of login page. So this is all we have to do at a minimum to convert a stateless widget into a stateful widget. You rename the base class into stateful widget, you supply a create state method which creates a new class and this new class uh, extends state of the original class. You will see this pattern over and over when you create Flutter apps. I also wanted to point out a couple of things quickly. One of them is that here I've used the arrow function uh, to inline the uh, result of create state. So rather than going for here brackets and doing this, the arrow function is just a shorthand that tells me, hey, you don't really need to do this. Uh, I know that my function is going to return in one line. So I'm just, I'm just gonna do this and it's quicker. It's, it's shorthand syntax. The other thing that you might notice is this underscore that I put in front of the login page state class. Now, underscores have a special meaning in Flutter and what they mean is private. So when you want to make something private, uh, in the sense that it's not accessible from a different file, then you, you prefix it with an underscore. So if you were to try to access your uh, login page state from main, you wouldn't be able to because you have declared it with an underscore. This means private. Okay, so with this change, we are now ready to uh, add some more things. So let's create a string to represent uh, the email and another one to represent the password that the user will enter uh, inside this widget. Okay, so today we made great progress. We have been able to create our first Flutter project and we started to build our own login application from scratch. We have also made the first encounter with widgets, which are the building blocks of any Flutter app. In the next video, things are going to get interesting. I will show you how to build the login form and how to validate it. And we will also see how to integrate Firebase within the project. So don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.